Okay let me start this off by saying I asked this raft to go above and beyond it a year. TM. S design limitations. And it delivered but was damaged in the process. I took this raft on a 3 day camping trip adjacent to the Sako river in NH. I used this raft in the river and a small pond and it exceeded my expectations. Frankly we put it through some dangerous rapids while on our journey to meet the mushroom god. The raft itself is comfortable and roomy enough for one adult or two small children. The oars are decent quality but don't ya yeah. TM. T try to fight a bear off with them. The patch kit sucks a dollar sign dollar sign but the included air is good but seems fragile like our society. While on this trip the raft acquired several holes from the rocks I rammed into but upon arriving home I was able to seal the leaks with flex seal. The last flotation device yaya. Yeah. TM. LL ever need. The Explorer 200 demonstrates superior performance as an inflatable watercraft far beyond the walls of the suburban above ground pool for which it was designed. This so called toy valiantly charged through the choppy waters of Lake Powell, effortlessly deflecting plates of ice with its seemingly impenetrable rubber hull as I explored a vast network of narrow sandstone canyons. Some may call it the poor man's packraft, but I strongly disagree. As any man fortunate enough to call an Explorer 200 his own is a rich man indeed. I never thought it would be this easy and cheap to escape my wife, but this truly is the ultimate wife escaper. Don't believe me. Try it yourself. Just blow up, Rowan Waller. It's that easy. Don't do what I did the first time and let her join. I haven't seen my wife in ages. I rode across Lake Erie and life has been incredible ever since. This raft worked fantastically for riding out of the back of an airplane at 13,500 feet. Fun was had by all.